All right, for the second part of segment one, we're going to talk about the character roles. Think of them as like the character classes. If you played, uh, what is it, the professions in Forbidden Lands, uh, there are no kin in this game because everybody's a mutant human. But uh, yeah, it, you're, we're going to talk about the role you're going to play with your mutant and what that uh, means and what you get for being a certain role. Does it matter if you pick an individual role? Can't you just do whatever you want anyway? Well, kind of. But there, there are themes and you probably want to play within that theme okay so we are going to talk about that before i get into that though i want to put that on the screen and of course uh i'm going to play the short version this time the core values of hashtag rp gate and any good tabletop group are escapism not representation entertainment over activism and natural organic inclusion not forced diversity Please follow that QR code or refer to the description below for the link to the charity we support, which is the Wounded Warrior Project. Thursdays and Saturdays, you can watch the Dirty Casuals on twitch.tv slash Legion of Myth. Fridays and Sundays, you can watch the Friday Night Chill Stream and RPG Digest on our YouTube and Rumble channels. Please leave us a comment with your thoughts and experiences, and if you like our gaming content, please be sure to subscribe to Legion of Myth. All right, here we go. I'm glad I don't have to say that. Anymore. I got a long version and a short version, so. <laughs> uh, always got to promote, though. Always have to chat up there. Present this over here. And you know what I'm going to do? Actually, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do this so I don't have to go back to it. Oh, that's not the right one. I'm going to show this first. All right. So, oh, wow, somehow played. So, do 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 do. Let's uh, can I put there? We go. I have dang it, hold on, you're not gonna be able to hear it. There we go. All right, so I have a video on a step by step character creation process for Mutant Year Zero. You can check that out. I'm gonna hit the share button right now. I'm gonna put it into chat. I think I have it in the description already. If not, I'll do that later. Or where, where am I going here? Uh, oh, you guys are over here. I'm gonna put that in the chat and you can uh. Check that out. So if you want an actual step-by-step -step character creation of Mutant Year Zero, I've got you covered already. So we will not be doing a step-by-step -step character creation here. So. All right. So let me get that back off the screen. And let's go back to here. Share, share. Or rule book. Boom. There we go. And we are once again talking about Mutant Year Zero. We're going to go into those roles. And I think it was page 21. If not, we'll find it. Yep, 21. You're mutant. And there are some things to consider when you play these roles. First thing you're going to want to consider is your role. And we're going to look over what those are in a moment. But this is all part of the character creation process. Uh, the Year Zero engine games are very similar to when we covered Hyperborea, where from beginning to end just walks you through the character creation process. You don't even necessarily realize it. You do this, you do that, all of a sudden, boop, you got a character done. Like, whoa, there's no specific chapter on just creating a character. It's all, it all flows. And that's another well-designed concept about these books. And when I say these books, I'm saying it that way because it's true for Forbidden Lands, it's true for Vason, it's true for Coriolis. Coriolis is a little more convoluted but there's also a lot more to it you got bionics and magic and you know, other things to worry about but it's the same basic setup and these books if you know any of these books you know all the books they're all set up generally the same in terms of chapter one is the background chapter two is the character classes chapter three is skills chapter four is talents you see where i'm going with that so uh yeah you can follow any of these books so we got the role next we've got age when were you born nobody knows people don't have kids anymore. Uh-oh. Uh, that means population's going down. So does age matter? I don't remember age mattering. Mattering? Did I just say that? Um, I, I don't... Yeah, age doesn't matter in this one like it does in, say, uh, Forbidden Lands. In Forbidden Lands, you get extra... Uh, you get, uh, was it higher attributes, lower skills for being younger, and you get lower attributes, higher skills for being older. So You want to have a name? Your attributes. Now we're gonna we're actually gonna dive into these attributes a little bit. Strength is raw physical power and endurance. 
I've had people complain that, you know, strength probably isn't the best term for that. Something else could have been done. But again, don't get hung up on the word that's used. You know that this is now the game mechanic word going forward. It's strength, and it represents your raw physical power and endurance. Strength is decreased by damage. Now, these terms matter because all of your attributes can be injured. All of them. Somebody could attack your wits. Somebody can attack your agility. Somebody can attack your empathy. Now, if you're smacked in the face with a mace or shot with a gun, it's going to come off your strength. But there are ways of attacking your other attributes as well. And so knowing what type of damage you took, or sorry, took a type of injury you took, in this case, damage means you take it off strength. Fatigue means you take it off agility. Confusion means you take it off wits. And empathy, well, doubt reduces empathy and this is actually a big one in the game or i should say in the free league games i don't know specifically this one if it is but doubt is something that gets attacked a lot outside of damage but they all can be so if you take two points of doubt that means your empathy's down well guess what your die pool is associated with your attribute so if you've got three base dice and you take one point of damage, three base dice for your strength, let's say you're doing a melee combat, you're going to swing down on somebody, bam! And with your three dice plus whatever your skill is in your gear, and you take a point of damage before that, you're now rolling, wow, two dice, not three dice. Three dice is what you used to roll. Now you took damage, you're rolling two dice. Okay, so there is a sort of death spiral to the game. Are there ways out of the death spiral? Yes, it's called team play i've said this a lot on other streams i'll say it here now this is actually a forbidden lance anecdote but it's the same thing i had a player when i did a test run of forbidden lands who basically threw a temper tantrum because the creature was rolling 14 dice and he was rolling six seven eight dice he ran in there and he got clobbered it's lucky he didn't die okay and he's oh what am i supposed to do blah, blah, blah. Be smart. Play tactically. That's how you do it. And yes, when you get punched in the face, you're going to lose strength. You're going to have to learn how to play with lower die rolls. On the flip side, Game Masters, and I can tell you this as experience as somebody who's run Forbidden Lands, who's run, well, it's really the only one I've run, run. Play tested uh, the Mutant Year Zero and the User Engine quite a bit. Don't Make the combat, how do I say this, overpowered. In terms of, well, the characters are all rolling eight dice. Yeah, to start, they're probably rolling eight dice. You beat them down a little bit. Now they're only rolling five dice. If you plan on them only as how they start the combat, and even then, you don't always start the combat fully healed. But if you only plan on them starting the combat fully healed, um, you're going to wipe out that party pretty quickly. The death spiral is real, and both game masters need to understand that, and players need to understand that. But it's also meaningful. It's not such a death spiral that's like, well, I took damage, I quit, I'm out, I can't play anymore. No, 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 no. <laughs> Don't be that guy. Play as a team. Okay? Once you play as a team, you'll find out and figure out your abilities, understand the rules of the game as we get into things like uh, sneak attacks, uh, how to get more dice how to use your gear dice you'll come to find out that oh this game actually is more in depth than i thought it was going to be it's not just oh look i have 12 skills and you know, this dice pool that whatever no you're going to find out there's a lot more to it you don't have to think about every single plus one and minus one like it's a pathfinder game okay but you also don't want to just kick back and be like yeah i'm just rolling my dice i'm doing my things because that will get you killed you want to be involved with your character and think through how your team handles. Oh. Uh, all right, let's see what chat's saying here. Uh, I'll throw a web duck. <laughs> no. Uh, do, 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 like Dark Queen Duck. Let's get dangerous. Da, da, da. Captain Gamer. Team play is the way. Absolutely, yes. Team play is the way. Is that like a sanity mechanic? Mm, you could... Heathen Dog would probably say no, 
But I think there's aspects of that where you could look at and, and think it definitely has elements of it. So we'll, unfortunately, I'm not going to talk about it today. I'm going to talk when we talk about combat and trauma, which is like three, four weeks from now. But we'll definitely get into that because it is an important aspect of play. With confusion, you're just like, you can't think straight. Think of it almost like sh uh, shell shock. Okay. With empathy, it's a combination. It depends on how that you are either like all so angry that you're kicking and screaming and punching things and breaking stuff, or you're sitting in the fetal position going, I can't do it, man. I can't do it. Everybody hates me. Um, you know, so, and how you want to play your characters, how you want to play your character, but, but it's, yeah, it's more, it's more along the lines. This is more emotional. Empathy is more emotional, which is cognitive. Agility just means, man, you are so tired. You just need to sit down. You need a break. And strength, of course, that's, you know, damage. You know, you're bleeding on things. So um, I can't remember Wits does, but strength and empathy have critical injuries associated with them. Strength is probably easy to figure out. Broken bones, right? Empathy is, no, this is where that sanity check kind of comes in. Think of it as like pal in palladium terms, uh, you just picked up an insanity. So. Now, character creation. Again, I'm not going to go into this. I said I put a link to the character creation video. It should be in the description below. If not, I will somebody make a comment saying, hey, you didn't put it in the description below, and I will get it there. Uh, choose your role. Choose your name. Define your appearance. Now, this is just however you want it to be. Distribute 14 points across the four attribute scores. Now, there are rules to that, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, oh, uh, I'm sorry. The, I'm going to have to do it now, because here they are. Each attribute must have a starting value of two to four. So, of those 14 points, you have four attributes, right? Must be between two and four, with the exception of your key attribute. And that will be defined by your role. An enforcer's key attribute is strength, because an enforcer wants to, well, enforce. And how do you enforce things? Obviously through strength, because might makes right. <laughs> so, the enforcer can have a starting attribute of five. Now, I stress the word starting. Max attribute is five no matter what. But even if you start with a two, you can raise it to a five. And this is the other side of the game that I've heard people complain about. On one side, there's the death spiral, which I, again, I don't think that's a problem. On the other side, characters can, over time, become quite powerful as they get more mutations, more talents. And we'll talk about talents in a couple weeks. More uh, and, and they spend the points to get all of their attributes to five. Yeah, that's just make combat. Just make the the, the combat's more challenging. That's all you have to do. <laughs> throw more at them. And you don't have to throw bigger things at them. Just throw more littler things at them if you want. All right. Um, so you choose a talent. Oh, sorry. Ten points across your skill levels. Now you saw that there are twelve skills. If not, well, we'll, we'll get to that. You only get 10 points. That means you're not going to have a point in every single skill. That's okay. You can still roll for those skills. Remember, those skills are very generic. You can still roll for them. You're just going to roll no skill dice. It's going to be based directly on your attribute. Remember that there are three types of dice. Base dice for your attributes, skill dice for your skills, and gear dice for if you're using gear to help the situation. You just won't roll those skill dice. You'll roll your attribute and gear dice. All right. Extra mutation. If you choose to start the game with an extra mutation, one of your attribute scores must be decreased by one step. I've never done this. Okay. I just have never done it. Skills. Skills are measured from zero to five. Remember, attributes are from two to four, well, two to five, but skills are zero to five. As, excuse me, as with the attributes, these are the number of dice that you roll. So if you have a three, you roll three skill dice, three of the green dice. To use a specialist skill, you need at least one, or a skill level of one. Uh, I thought it used to say that you had to have a minimum of one. I might be wrong about that, but I thought it used to say you have to have a minimum of one in a special skill. I think you're dumb if you don't do that, so I would probably require that as a game master, but I don't want to say what the book is not saying here. So. Starting levels when creating your character, you get to distribute 10 points across your skills. 
The maximum starting level for any skill is three, and you must have at least, oh yeah, okay, it is right here. And you must have at least one in your specialist skill. And we'll look at what specialist skills are in a bit. For those of you who have played Forbidden Lands, you're like, wow, you can do anything at a three in this game? Yes. Because Forbidden Lands, you might know that you can only have your key skills start with a three. Everything else can only start with a one. But uh, we'll get to that later when we talk about Forbidden Lands in a few months. Talents. Talents are tricks, moves, and minor abilities that give you a small edge. We're definitely going to talk more about talents. Well, we're going to have an entire segment on it in a couple weeks, but we'll talk more about that in a little bit. You need to figure out what, your t what talents you want. You get an option of three, and you get to pick one. Now, after the game starts, your options increase, I don't know, how, either, what, 30 options? But to start, you get one of three. So if you don't get the talent you want, or like you really wish you could have another one, maybe you can beg, borrow, and steal from your Game Master. But other than that, just know once you start, you can spend the points to get the other general talents. Mutations. Now, this is where things, this is why it's a mutant year zero and not human year zero, right? Your mutations are superhuman abilities. Where the mutations come from, no one among the people knows. Probably the rot. <laughs> the problem is that they are both unpredictable and dangerous, even to yourself. Man, I cannot wait till we talk about mutations to find out about that. You're like, wait, 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 what? The da to use a mutation? That's dangerous to me as well? Yes, they are. Especially when you look at the power of them, you're like, that's really not that all that strong. It's not like it's game changing. What's going on here? Because it's another risk reward concept. Is it worth using it now? It's certainly going to help us. But, and a lot of this game is built around the risk reward concept. Again, I like it. So, uh, normally, you get one mutation from the start, you don't get to choose your mutation. In fact, I think it says in the Game Master section of the book, Game Masters don't let the characters choose. I know a bunch of people just threw their arms up in the air. Look, this is a post-apocalyptic world where you got crazy rotten radiation and all nonsense going on. No, you don't get to pick. Okay? This is like being, this is, go watch Futurama. Not all of them got to pick what their mutations were. <laughs> <laughs> instead you draw a random card or roll on the chart which we'll show later on so and i already, I already sh uh, showed the cards in the last segment Get that. so two mutations we kind of already talked about that if you want to start using cards mutation points how the individual mutations works is set out on the mutation cards and in chapter five again we'll cover that in a few weeks to activate a mutation you must spend at least one mutation point max how do we get mutation points we'll cover that later on without mutations you cannot use any mutation without mutation points sorry you cannot use any mutations you can never fail when activating a mutation i want you i want to say this again because you're gonna you're gonna argue with me later you cannot fail using a mutation all right oh you can have side effects <laughs> things can happen oh yeah your mutation worked but <laughs> you know now again i make it sound like that happens all the time it doesn't but uh just so you know you no matter what happens let's just say somehow i don't even think this is possible let's just say somehow it is you suicide yourself using the mutation your mutation will still work there's no role it works what you roll for are if there are any complication side effects. Maybe it didn't use a mutation point. Maybe you get extra dice to your roll. Maybe you just spit acid on yourself and you're dissolving. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, do the mutation cards work in, like combat cards? No. And I'm going to say this up front now to get people steeled for this when we go through Forbidden Lands. I don't use the, com uh, the combat cards. I do not like them. I, I know somebody's going to say, what? That's horrible. You're screwing the fighter over because that's one of the talents that you can get at the beginning of the game. I know. And I don't care. I'm not against anybody who does use them. I don't like them in my game. I like what would he call basic combat without the cards. The combat that you'll find here in this game. So uh, so I don't even use those here. But no, these uh, the, the, uh, is it the mutation cards here are, uh, they just tell what the mutations are. That's it. It's Whatever you read in the book as to what the mutation can do, that's what's on the card. And what the, what's cool about that is you can have the card in front of you then and not have the book. Be like, oh, I can do... Oh, there's acid spit. That's the first one. Um, 
Oh, I can spit acid on a target up to near range. Okay. You know. Uh, do, 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 do. All you need to do is expend the, the mutant uh, mutation points. But the power of the mutation can have unpredictable effects, and we will get to that when we talk about that chapter. Again, that will be in a couple weeks. At the beginning of every game session, you get a number of mutation points equal to the number of mutations you have. Now, if you have, yeah, if you have one mutation, you get one point. If you have five mutations, you get five points. At the start of the session, Game Masters, as somebody who likes to have, have currencies in the game, and I like to, well, as they like to screw players over with those currencies, my, my most famous example is Earth Dawn, drink, where uh, I would not give them, if they traveled 10 days, I would not give them 10 days worth of karma rituals. I only gave karma rituals based on the days of adventuring in character. So what I'd do in that case, I'd roll a D10. And if it came up a four, you got four days worth of karma rituals. So my point in saying that, at the start of the session, just let them have. If you, if you finished last week or yesterday or however often you play, give them the mutation point. It's okay. They're not going to unbalance the game. And if it is going to, maybe uh, maybe you did something wrong there. Give them the mutation point. And then smile, because the more they use them, the more they have a chance of weird stuff happening. But you can never have more than 10 mutation points. If you like it to slow down your game and, and confuse new players, that's fine. I, I don't like the combat cards. I also don't like cards in any game, so I don't like initiative cards either. So I roll dice. I roll dice for initiative even in my Forbidden Lands games. Not when, when I talk about it here, but uh, you, yeah, I roll dice. Because cards in tabletop role-playing games are dumb. Even in Deadlands. Yeah, I said it. So, uh, <laughs> attributes. So you can see uh, it filled out here. Strength, agility, wits, empathy. One of the things I do is on the uh, character sheet that uh, that you can get from Free League that's form fillable, you'll get dots in here, okay? Obviously, it's not going to happen here, but you can get dots in here. I So this three, I would leave three white, and then I would have dots in these two. For the five, there'd be no dots. For the wits, there'd be one dot here. And then I just fill these in as I take damage. And when I'm full, I'll be broken. And we'll talk what broken means when we get to the combat chapter. So, uh, but, uh, now 10 points to spend on Skittles, right? Well, this person has none in endure and none in force. Well, how are you going to move anything? Well, you'll move things with your strength. How are you going to punch somebody? Your fight is zero. Again, you're just going to use strength. You'll get three dice to roll and hopefully get a six. It's that simple. Sneak. Oh, now we go. There we go. Well, let's see. Five agility and two in sneak. You're rolling seven dice. Shoot! Again, agility. Five agility dice. Three shooty shoot dice. That's eight dice. And you might even have gear bonus because of your gun. Okay. So, find the path. We'll talk about that in a moment. Rot points will come later. Experience points will come later. Appearance, you can do what you want. Talent scavenger, we'll talk about those in a little bit, what that actually means. Gear, we'll talk about what type of gear you get. Um, let me think for a second. I don't think there's a mo moment in the game where we're going to talk about encumbrance, so let me talk about encumbrance now. I am going to word this a little differently than what the book does. It's still the same thing. I'm wording it the way I say it to myself so that I can get through it quicker. All right? Small items take up half a line. So what does that mean? Tiny items we're not even going to talk about. Small items take up half a line. That means you can have, well, grub four rations. Well, that's that's a full line right there. Uh, water, two rations. That's, that's a half a line, if I remember correctly. So if he had grub two rations also, those two could be on the same line. Scrap rifle, I think, is a normal size item, so it takes up one line. So you have small items, which take up a half a line. You have normal items, which take up one line. And then you have heavy items. I kind of like to think of it as more as uh, cumbersome items, because they don't necessarily just have to be heavy. But bulky, cumbersome items take up two lines. Now you're like, oh, cool, I got ten lines. No, you only have ten lines if you have a strength of five. 
This character with a strength of three has six lines worth of items before the character is encumbered. It's whatever your strength is times two. So once you get to the six, after that, you're encumbered. And I'm not going to lie, I don't remember the encumbrance rules off the top of my head. I think it's minus two to action, but I, I, I don't even want to go there because I might be wrong. I don't remember the encumbrance rules off the top of my head. Maybe we'll see them here. But that's how now and now things like bags. Well, what if you have a backpack? Well, the backpack is nothing. OK, the backpack bags themselves do not take up an item slot. They'll help you with carrying items, though. So. Uh, one mutation point. Here's the scrap rifle. So it's got a gear bonus of plus one. Weapons in this game all have gear bonuses. So let's just say this person, well, let's just say he's using this gun. Gear bonus of plus one. Shoot of three. And an agility of nine. Up to nine. Wow, five. I did all the math already. Five. You'll be rolling five base dice. Three skill dice. One gear die. That's it. Nine dice. And those three separate things matter based on how you roll. And when we talk about skills next week, when we talk about pushing the roll, you'll understand why those ones and sixes are important and why skills don't have ones. Okay. And then we have relationships down here. And each character in the game, one thing, another thing I love about the free league games, every character in the game has a relationship, or every player character has a relationship with the other player character. It could be as simple as, well, you're brand new to the game. We don't know you. My character doesn't know you from Adam. Well, that's my relationship with you. I don't know who this twerp is. I need to find out. There you go. You now have a relationship with that character. And as soon as you know who that character is, or you understand what the character is, the relationship changes. That's why it said in step six or seven that you'll change the relationship at the end of the session. Or you can, if it's meaningful, if, if it's appropriate change. Okay? Relationship theory. Uh, Naphtha's walk the zone with me. I don't know if I like that one. That seems a little bit more vague than I prefer, but uh, you know it is. Here we go. Denric is a pompous idiot. Now, when you come to find out that Denric isn't a pompous idiot, or something goes even more south, like, not only is he a pompous idiot, but I hate this guy, I'm taking him out, that's a change to the relationship. And you can change at the end of the session. Uh, is that Huguet? Is that, or Hugust? What is that? Uh, might actually understand me. Again, that can change as, as the game changes. As your relationships with the other players change. So why does it, what does it matter? If they're going to change anyway, what does it matter? Because you get experience points based on role playing and hand and how you handle the relationships. Okay. That's why. All right. NNGM, have a good one. Uh, you can go ahead and watch the rest of this later. If you want, when it comes out uh, in the week in it's actual two different segments, but I hope you enjoyed this and it's good to see you here. I hate. Now there's always somebody you hate. Why? Because this gives the game master a hook to use against, I mean, to have add more story to your character. This Dr. Yesen, who's gone deeper into the zone. You hate him because he's gone deeper than you. And that makes sense because this looks like a, a stalker. Yep. Man, he's gone deeper. He gets all the glory because he's gone deeper. And everybody's like, oh, all the girls are looking at him like, oh, look what he's done. What have you done? Nothing. <laughs> you need to protect protect the grunt which used to be slave oh okay now i have to look it up see see what page is that 20 yep it says the slave ariel come on free league didn't need to do that the slave ariel she doesn't deserve a life of toil and that's that's actually a good I like that. And to me, that even makes more sense saying slave. I want to get you out of that. I want to uplift you. Grunt sounds like, eh. Yeah, you know, I was in the military. Eh, grunt. <laughs> What's your big dream? To go deep in the zone and find Eden. That's probably the most common one. Others might be just get rich, you know, whatever. Live a good life, whatever. But, uh, you know, the whole find the Eden... Uh, big dream, that's probably the most common one. But 
with good reason. So, uh, oh, that's a good mutation, by the way. Rot Eater. Why? I don't know. We'll talk about it in a few weeks. People I've met, you've met these two people. Obviously, if you need to protect one and hate the other, you've met them. Your den, this is like your home. You can't carry everything with you all the time, but you're probably going to have a stash, right? The wreck of a van at the edge of the ark. Oh, okay, oh, okay. so that's, that's the description. Your den can be in the ark. You could technically have it outside the ark, but that's dangerous. But this is the wreck of a van at the edge of the ark. So you're in the ark, but you're at the edge of it. And there you go. So anytime you go home, because your den is your home, you're living in a wreck, wreck van. You, you got yourself one of the, either a 1960s uh, hippie wagon or you got a 1970s pedophile wagon. It's up to you. I don't care. <laughs> Demonetized. I don't care. Relationships and dreams. Kind of talked about those are. Anyway, your gear. Well, I want to get to the roles because this segment's going kind of long. So encumbrance, I've kind of talked about that already. <laughs> Free candy. <laughs> Heavy and light items. Again, if you need more explanation of that, buy the book, enjoy the game. Grub, water, and booze. Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot about booze. Ah, we got to talk about this. Four rations of grub or water count as one regular item. So one regular item is one line. That's, again, I say it differently, and if that's confusing, I apologize. But uh, one regular, I, I'm sorry, one, re yeah, one regular item is a line. A small item is half a line. A heavy item are two, uh, is two lines. All right. So up to four, you can have on one line. Or it says row here. Whatever. Two rations plus a light item. So two rations is a light item. Oh, I'm sorry. I yeah, okay, it is light. Yeah, I thought it was small, but it's light. My bad. Booze is normally kept in a bottle that counts as one regular item. One such bottle contains 10 doses of the strong stuff. What? I mean, doses? Oh, yeah. Booze can, booze can help you. And we'll talk about that later when we're in combat and trauma. So you might want to keep a little bit of the old spirits on you, a little bit of the alcohols, because it might save your life. Uh, tiny items, you can get into that later. Oh, yeah, okay, so, so you can temper... Uh, where is it? Um, yeah, strength times two items. I already said that. Drawbacks have to make a roll. Uh, oh, you have to make an endure roll. That's what it is if you want to walk for a significant distance. All right. And if you fail your endure roll, you sit down like, oh, man, I'm too tired to go on. I got to stop this, man. So that's what it was. For some reason, I thought it was like a minus two to other stuff. It's not. So. And your den, we kind of talked about that. New mutations. You can come up with more mutations if you want. Work it out with your dungeon master. Sorry, your game master. And you can also pick up more mutations through experience points uh, the ones out of the book. I've actually seen a list of a lot more mutations than what's given in this book. I don't use them myself, but then again, I've also never fully run this game you know, full on for a party, so maybe I would. I don't know. But you can spend XP to raise a skill, get a talent. Uh, here's how you gain experience. Did you participate in the session? You get one just for being there. Nope. I'm just going to be upfront with you. That doesn't, that doesn't fly at my table. Uh, you know, if he doesn't make the chat available on the... I do. I, I do. I make the chat available. <laughs> I always click that button. Except for when I forget. But uh, yeah. Uh, did you participate in the session? Now, now, here's my thing. Did you participate in the session and you weren't disruptive? Did you participate in the session and you actually participate? You don't have to be a thespian. You don't have to be all alpha, you know, alpha male or type A personality, or whatever. But are you there? And did you do anything meaningful? Even if you're quiet, that's totally fine. Just don't be disruptive and actually be a participant at the table. That, uh, did you perform a day's work for a project in the arc? Well, that pretty much comes from, you know, yes, you should have done that. That's part of the process. Now, you might not. You might be stuck out in the zone. The session ended, you're stuck out in the zone. Well, then, yeah, you're not going to get that one. Okay. Did you explore at least one new sector of a zone? Well, there you go. There's another experience point. See, these two can both overlap, or you might get one or the other. Did you sacrifice or risk something for your PC buddy? We didn't talk about buddies when I talked about relationships, so let me show it up here. Oh, where is it? If you notice, um, Naptha is a buddy. 
that means you have a little bit closer relationship with that person. Doesn't mean you have any sort of weird stuff going on, though you probably could. It just means you're closer to this person. This person is your friend. And if you have some sort of self-sacrifice for the person, where's it? There we go. Did you risk? If you risk something for your buddy, you're going to get an experience points. What's the point of this? Well, there are no alignments in the game, and it's a way of encouraging the players. I said the players, that's right. To help each other. You'll get an experience point if you do something for someone else. Did you sacrifice or risk something for the NPC you want to keep safe? Now, that's kind of up to the Game Master also. Did the Game Master give you the opportunity to do it? I'm a little flexible on this one. Where I would actually allow it to go for the party as well. As long as it's truly sacrifice and tr or truly risk. Okay. Did you sacrifice or risk something to mess with the NPC you hate? Okay. <laughs> I, yeah, I can't see myself giving a lot of opportunity for that, but yeah, who knows? Did you sacrifice or risk something to reach your big dream? That's not going to happen every session. But I saw something, and I saw somebody write this up. I think it might have been on Reddit. This is a couple years ago, so I'm probably not saying it exactly correct. But somebody was working towards his big dream. But when you saw it session by session, it didn't, wasn't really noticeable. But boom, when it came out, it was like, oh my god, the character actually got the, uh, the big dream. And it was a legit big dream. It wasn't something you could accomplish in just you know, two sessions. And the Game Master asked, what do I do? And most people said, you give them XP for all those sessions that build up to it. I agree with that. Again, I'm not afraid of characters becoming extra powerful in this game. Because all that means is I get to add more fun stuff. So, just skill, uh, develop the art. All right, let's look at, this, at the roles. And when we're done with the roles, we are done with this segment. And we're not going to dive into all of them. We're going to look at a couple of them. And deeply, the rest, it's the same format. All right. So we're going to start with the Enforcer. Every day is a fight for survival. No one knows that better than you. As long as you can remember, you have been fighting for grub, for bullets, for respect. Your knuckles and your soul are hardened. Crushing a jaw no longer hurts. You have learned the fighter's secret. It's not about who's the strongest. It's about who will never quit. I like that last line there, or last two, because it goes into the strength attribute. It's not just, strength isn't just strength. Strength is also your endurance. Typical names, I ignore that stuff. Make whatever name you want. Key attribute, strength. What does that mean? All, remember, we talked about this. All of your attributes can be two to four. Except for your key attribute, which can be five. So you can make your strength a five if you want to. Of course, you still have a maximum of 14 points to spread around, but... You can make your strength five. Specialist skill, intimidate. What's important to note about the specialist skill, unless I'm not thinking clearly about something here, at least in my own noodle here, every specialist skill is actually based on a normal skill. In this case, manipulation, if I remember correctly. Well, we'll look at it in a moment. But it adds a bonus when doing something particular with that skill. Skills are broad. Well, why would I make an enforcer to do X, Y, and Z when I can do that with any role? What does it matter? Well, because the, the enforcer's specialist skill leads toward that. Allows you to use the generic skill in a way that only the enforcer can do it. Some of the talents are very similar to that as well. Hey, CBK plot. Uh, appearance, you can do it how you want. These are, uh, again, always choose for yourself. I love the fact, like when I set up here, like I don't use this, whatever, I wasn't complaining about the names. I'm glad that they're there. Get some brain juices flowing. But I'm more about letting the, the player decide what uh, the player wants to name the character. Same here. Whatever you want. Okay? No, you are not going to be Mortimer Snurd, the, the original 90 pound uh, weakling. I think that's a heavy gear thing. Um, 
and call yourself an enforcer with a with a where is it? Yeah, with a strength endurance uh, with a strength of five. No, you have to fit the role. But other than that, you make your character how you want. Now, talents. We'll talk about the talents in chapter four. Not going to look at it now. If you want to see more about how the talents work in character creation, go watch that character creation video that I hopefully have in the description. You can pick one of these three. Barge through, mean streak, sucker punch. Barge through allows you to make a move roll using your strength instead of your agility. Normally you make a move roll with your agility. But this one, military people get this one, make a hole! And <laughs> you just start barging through. Mean streak, I forget off the top of my head. I think it adds to your intimidation, but don't quote me on that one. I think it gives you a bonus to intimidation, but uh, I, I don't remember. And Sucker Punch allows you to do more damage when you're using unarmed combat. So, a uh, relationship to other PCs. Once again, great. I, I want you to come up with your own personally, but it's great that it gives options here. Yes, the names are suggestions, exactly. Relationships to NPCs. Again, Choose for yourself, but if you can't think of one, here are some great ideas. Your big dream. I'm repeating myself, but that's what it is. Gear. You start the game with a D6 bullet. So it's basically a D6, a D6 dollars or things to you know harm an enemy with. What's kind of cool about this is you can go D6 bullets. What I need to shoot people for? I punch them. Right? So that's effectively free money. Or, maybe you could surprise somebody with a gun. It's all how you put your, uh, you do your skill points, right? 2d6 rations of grub. That's awesome. Grub also heals strength damage. We'll get into that later, but uh, just remember that. And a d6 rations of water. Water heals your fatigue. So, kind of makes sense that he has extra food, not just for eating, but you know, for the sake of uh, healing as well. And you choose one of these three, one of these starting weapons a spike bat, brass knuckles, scrap axe, and you can buy extra gear with your bullets. And there is other gear in the old book. Okay, let's look at one more. We've got a gearhead here. I'll skip the gearhead. Uh, Wits jury rig, which is pretty cool. Allows you to build stuff or repair stuff better. Well, Motorhead uh, allows you to drive. <laughs> can be a, uh, not a crash test dummy. You can be a stunt driver. Uh, the Stalker, this is like a scout. Uh, uh, oops, what's this one? Agility and find the path. Um, this is pretty cool, especially if you don't like uh, getting rot or you want to um, if you want to make your zone travels easier, this is the class you want. And I suggest you make your zone travels easier. This is a great role for somebody to play. Um, you have the fixer. Bullets, grub, water, artifacts, a warm body next year. It's whatever people want, you can get it. That's right. And uh, empathy, why is no empathy? Well, empathy is your conniving manipulation. <laughs> it's uh, it's your social. Empathy is your social. So, I mean, salesmen are taught to read people. Salesmen are taught to, uh, uh, to uh, how is it? ask questions, to get to know people and so forth. And there's a reason for that. Whether the person's truly empathic, who knows? You know, it's really cares, who knows? But if you can play along... That's empathy. The dog handler. This is your pet class. And it's actually kind of cool. You can have your dog fight for you. You can have your dog help you through a tough situation. Your dog can scout for you. So, and yes, your special skills are sick of dog. Or is, I guess. The chronicler. Actually, this is the one I'm going to look at. So, does Motorhead allow me to summon uh, the Patent Saint Lemmy? What? The Patent Saint Lemmy to aid me in combat? I don't know what that is. So, maybe? 
feel like I should know what that is, but I don't. All right. Chronicler, everything must be recorded. All of the people, I'm sorry, all the people, all the people too must be taken note of. Nothing forgotten. The elder has been saying that as long as you can remember. The most gifted among you. I don't know why I can't read this one. The most gifted among you, he made chroniclers. Tasked with writing down the fate of the people in yellowed notebooks. You have filled many books by now. Elder will soon be gone, but you won't betray your pledge to him. Names, empathy again. Empathy, shouldn't it be wits, which is your intelligence stuff? We'll get to it. It's because the specialist skill is inspire. What can you do with inspire? Well, let's take a look. Bone saw. Oh, <laughs> I forgot that the chronicler, chronicler gets bone saw. Well, bone saw allows you to. Uh, how do I say this? You've got medical knowledge, sort of. It allows you to help with the healing of critical injuries. Not normal injuries, critical injuries. Okay. Agitator. You can inspire people to shoot better and fight better. And performer will help you get stuff you need. Kind of your bard, and people will pay you for it. Okay. So. The boss. And you gotta have somebody who's in charge, right? This is your Negan. Enough said. <laughs> Wits. Command. And uh, we're not going to look at them today. You know, you know, it might not make sense, but we'll look at those special abilities when we cover um, when we cover skills next week. And the slave. That's right. I said it right. It's the slave. I don't know why the first three printings had it as slave, but this one, for whatever reason, decided it want, wanted to change it to grunt, which, again, I don't respect that change at all. In case you think I'm out of my mind. There it is right there. Slate. It should have stayed that. In my games, you'll still be a slave. So, but what's pretty cool is you get abilities to resist and soak damage. Okay. Um, Rebel. I don't remember Rebel. Is that a new one? They changed that too? Uh oh. Page is that. I don't know. Dog handler, chronicler. Maybe it is in here. Nope, it is in here. Rebel. I, I don't honestly don't remember Rebel. But uh, you can push through damage. You can push through hardship. That's what's cool about the slave. So if you want a character that truly endures, the slave is the way to go. So. And that's it. That's that's everything. Next week, the entire segment is just going to be skills, and it's because I we're going to dive into the role play, uh, not the, the die rolling. We're going to explain how it works. I'm going to show some examples of it. Um, maybe we're doing this, you know, too in depthly. I mean, we're at what uh, the stream starts at one. We're pushing three. Yeah, no, that's that's not too bad. Um, here, you know, I don't want to go go down all the. <laughs> We'll show off some art. Remember, they're mutant humans. Uh, did I s skip anything here that I wanted to talk uh, talk about? So none of the people over the age of 30 years old. That was more of a segment one thing. Uh, maybe one day you'll... F uh, okay, I already talked about that. Uh, there is a... Oh, there's a free starter book. If you don't want to buy the game, it won't have all this information, everything in it, but there's a free starter book from the Free League website. You can download the generic play of the game right now. You can get started to see if this is the type of game you want to play. I don't know what's missing from it, comparatively. Uh, I've already mentioned that. And I talked about specialty dice. I talked about that. Yeah, so I, I've covered everything. I mean, I've got all the zone compendiums, which are the modules behind me. At least all the, all the official ones. So... I, I hope you guys enjoy this. There's no segment two, so we will jump into segment three in a little bit here. But I hope you guys enjoyed that. So let's see what we got here in chat. I kind of was keeping up with chat. There wasn't a lot going on. Uh, yeah, Squirrel, I, you know, again, it's, it's 
culture war stuff. And, you know, some people don't want me to talk about it, but, uh, and I try not to when it comes to RPG Digest, but it is a real thing. And I will spout out and stand up against nonsense, and I'm not going to let them win. So now, is it a ma- is it really big issue? No, because you know what? What Free League does so well, whether it's this game, whether it's Forbidden Lands, whether it's v- Simba Room. Oh, my God, Simba Room, which no, I'm not covering. But uh, Free League knows how to how to maintain. For lack of a better term, bio biosensualist tropes. Free League knows how to keep the traditions of the games alive. What I love about whether it's Mutant Year Zero, Forbidden Lands, Vason, whatever, is you have, and again, people who know me have heard this a lot of times, but I'm going to say it here for the people who watch this video later. It has combat. It's always combat in games, right? Has great social rules. And we'll get to that. Ooh, is that next week? I think that might be next week. There's a lot that's going to be covered next week has great social combat or social conflict. Okay? It has base building. You don't have to wait till level 9. This is Dungeons and Dragons. It has base building. It has um it has the zone travel or in Forbidden Lands the hex travel. So it has exploration Westmarch style. My map is going to be different than your map. I'm missing one because there's always supposed to be 5 and I forget what the fifth one is now. But uh it has everything wrapped into one. And that's what I love. And Freely gets it. So yeah, my quibble with the, you know, and me calling out a couple of things that I don't agree with. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I, I'm, I'm, I have commentary and opinion. Okay. But ultimately, as far as, and, and as we talked about at the beginning of the stream, or at the beginning of yesterday's, uh, yesterday's, wow, the, the previous segment, the introduction to the game, Jenny from Free League has been freaking awesome. Every time I've worked with her, Omen Owl even said that in chat. Anytime you work with Free League, Free League, I would go out to say, loves their customers. So, all told, my concerns with Free League is they keep going down the path, and I always find a a new one, a new one, a new one, and I don't know when that straw is going to break the camel's back. Also, I don't, I really, really, really would like Free League to remember came from don't forget about mutant year zero this other company's got to find don't forget about coriolis it's what your name of your company is based on don't forget about coriolis please you know obviously they're not forgetting about forbidden lands they're not forgetting about uh um alien and it was like well why do we need two uh space rpgs well we'll see how this new alien expansion thing comes out because it kind of cures the one thing that i thought was wrong with it but uh no i as of today this could change tomorrow or a year from now but as of today i've got a couple of finger wags at uh at free league but all told i like free league and you know at least i like what they've put out so far so i hope you guys do as well so that's uh let's wait and see if some more comments would pop in didn't so we'll uh like subscribe and share next week skills